David Brewster here with Brewster's Millions of Rants, and this is a guitar technique spring cleaning. And while I'm not going to show you how to clean your car or your home or your guitar or whatever, we are going to focus and kind of clean up your technique. And if you're anything like me and you live in an area that actually has a winter with, you know, cold temperatures and snow and ice, you know, I'm from Chicago, so I'm talking about people, you know, in the north, uh, northern area. I'm not talking about people like in Hawaii, you know, that live in a tropical paradise, you know, sitting on the beach eating pineapple. That's really not fair. So I'm not talking about people like that. I'm talking about people like in Minnesota, Alaska, Canada, you know, any place that actually really has a winter. In the wintertime, your hands and the muscles and tendons and ligaments, you know, in your forearms, your wrists, your hands and everything get really cold. And it seems to slow things down. So if you're like me in the wintertime, my practicing kind of changes, my playing changes. You won't really find me working on, you know, Ingve or Chris and Pelletary solos in the middle of, you know, January because it's so freaking cold. But I do work on, you know, technique and definitely you can shred. It just seems to take a little bit longer to kind of warm up your hand and loosen things up in the wintertime. And then by the time spring arrives, I usually find myself refining and kind of tightening up, you know, picking and fretting and working both hands together. And that's what this lesson is going to focus on. So as far as exercises and workouts and these technical, you know, uh, ideas on the guitar, you can go back a long ways. And definitely, you know, players like John Petrucci and Steve Vai, you know, Vai famously released, you know, the 10-hour workout, which I think was followed by a 20-hour workout. I have no idea. Now he might have like a 48-hour workout. I don't know. But I do remember seeing his 10-hour workout in Guitar World, I think. And that magazine, you know, lesson or, or feature it really did prime my thought of warming up and exercising my hand and I worked with that lesson and then I continued and then over the years I started picking up exercises from classical guitarists and jazz guitarists and bluegrass and country and there's a whole bunch of stuff you can learn and if you're curious I did put together an instructional method I released last year it's only available on patreon but it's called fretboard fitness and the exercises and ideas in this lesson don't appear in that method but fretboard fitness literally is a workout exercise you know, method or instructional method. So if you're you know, really curious about how to you know, kind of shape up your technique and learn more exercises and more of these ideas, definitely check out fretboard fitness. There's a ton of stuff in there. The first idea here is called pinky torture, and this is a very low impact uh, exercise using chords. And we're going to basically target and use your pinky a lot, but we're also going to be holding down, you know, a bar chord at the same time. So it is pinky focused, but I've noticed whenever I warm up and use exercises and kind of warm up my hand, if I get my pinky moving and going, it seems like my other fingers, you know, the rest of my fingers on my hand kind of fall into place. It seems like, you know, if I get the pinky warmed up, the other fingers just kind of follow suit. And the next thing I know, I'm, you know, flying around the fretboard. We have to start somewhere and we're going to go really slow here. We're not worried about, you know, speed or impressing your neighbor or something like that. Really just focus on playing very clean and make sure you have every note, uh, you know, with these chords, you know, sounding correctly. And uh, probably use like a clean tone. You don't have to use, you know, like super clean, but you definitely don't want a raging, you know, distorted tone because these chords are going to sound kind of weird. But it starts with B major right here. Make sure you're in tune because you definitely need to be in tune for this exercise or it's going to sound really strange. All right, so start with B major. Take your pinky, move it over to the, the ninth fret there on the G string, and now you're playing a B7 sus4. So we're just literally moving that pinky over one string. I mean, I'm not smashing my fingers into the strings, but I am using, you know, a fair amount of force or pressure, you know, uh, fretting those notes. Now take your pinky and move it over again. Now move to the ninth fret on the B string, and that's going to change that to a B13. And then move it over one more time and grab that C sharp there on the ninth fret on the high E, and now you're playing B7 uh, add 9. you to do once you see that kind of movement there you know, use firm pressure and now I want you to 
strum the chord and then pick backwards just to kind of check yourself and make sure every single note you can hear, you know, audibly. series of four chords you know to sound clean and then you know once you kind of do that B you can start moving around you can change it to other keys let's do it again but let's do it in A flat minor right here so now we're not using that middle finger but we're gonna do the same thing with your pinky so there's A flat minor A flat 7 sus4 and then A flat minor 13 like this flat minor 7 add 9. So it's the same process we just had for B. But down in A flat minor. And this is going to help you with dexterity, definitely strength. You know, I can definitely feel it, you know, kind of right here in my in the, the kind of top part of my hand, my wrist, a little bit in my forearm, just that very slight muscle burn. You know, there's no pain, but I can feel that exercise actually working. Next we have pentatonic leapfrog, and we're gonna basically start here in B minor pentatonic, and we're literally jumping over strings, and we're string skipping, but we're using the minor pentatonic scale and really kind of forcing your hand to play that scale in a different way. Instead of just playing it straight up and down, you know, ascending and descending, we're going to do it like this, and I'm going to go real slow here. And I'm using hammer-ons right there. And then you can do the same thing in reverse and do pull-offs, but go really slow. Because you want to make really firm, you know, contact and kind of, you know, push those notes down. You don't want to hurt yourself. You're not going to go, you know, crazy. But you want to use, you know, firm pressure and really, you know, pick the notes, um, you know, kind of accented. So maybe fret and pick a little harder than you normally do. And then that way when you relax, it's going to feel a little bit easier, you know, when you're playing. But, you know, you don't want to tense up your wrist or your hand, but just use a little bit more aggression or a little more pressure when you're playing with that. for you um, you might be thinking man that's super easy because it is just the box but we can run through all five positions in the minor pentatonic scale we can do that in B and I'm just going to do it in a comfortable you know tempo I'm not trying to race through it I'm just trying to really strengthen and warm up my hands something like this positions of B minor pentatonic but if you do that that's great not only for string skipping technique but it's also helping you just work on once again dexterity you're kind of working on this you know strength building because you're jumping and leaping over strings and it's also just kind of really helping you with agility because you're challenging your fret hand by leaping and jumping around like that and it's also tightening up your knowledge and understanding the, the positions of the minor pentatonic scale because if you know the scales, you know, straight up and down, when you start skipping through them, it really challenges, you know, your memory or your knowledge of those scales. Right up next, we have an exercise I'm calling the pedal point runaround, and this is really interesting. So pedal point in music, you know, definitely comes from classical music. You can check out, you know, Bach and Handel and composers like that and hear pedal point in action. You can definitely hear it in neoclassical, you know, metal guitarist, Yngwie, Chris and Pelletieri, a whole bunch of people. But we're basically pedaling uh, this little two note motif right here, this F sharp and G. And it's almost you know, kind of like a pivot in a way. And that's basically the pedal point 
motion. But what we're going to do is your index finger on the G, B, and the high E is going to move between those three notes, that C, E, and A. So slowly we're doing this. And then you want to repeat that until you're absolutely sick of it. You know, and you can pick through it. You know, if you really want to kind of strengthen up that uh, that third and pinky finger. But the important thing here is making, you know, a solid connection with each note. And you're also fretting and picking at the exact same time. So you don't want to pick early or late. You want to nail it right when you fret those notes. you know this fingering combination now we're gonna flip that we're gonna go to this so we're gonna move up to the next position and do the exact same thing right here so we have this and we're gonna go up one more time and we're gonna stretch now so we're gonna have a fret in between each finger and we're gonna have this you know fingering pattern but well, we're going to start it like this. So we're grabbing that E right there on the G and then back, you know, to this G note and then also to that C note right there. And from there, you can either work your way back down or you can keep going higher, you know, something like this. But the important thing there is you're working on these different fingering combinations. This, this, and this. And then you're also kind of moving, you know, that index finger around and dancing around on different strings too. So there's some finger independence, definitely strength building, this kind of position strength, you know, uh, working these different position and fingering positions. You know, great exercise for sure. Right, I've named the next exercise the pentatonic shift, and I do like exercises that are musical or melodic. And there's nothing wrong with the chromatic based or symmetrical based you know exercises that you see a lot you know for guitar and they sound you know like uh, science fiction music or something they don't really sound like anything it just sounds like a bunch of notes you know it sounds like something that's chromatic based which it is and it definitely has that kind of twilight zone sound where it doesn't really sound like music it just sounds like you're literally exercising you know your hands but whenever an exercise actually has a flow or repetitive, you know, rhythmic kind of a hiccup or something like that, it's definitely more interesting for me because it actually sounds like music. And that's kind of what this exercise is. Something like this. <laughs> You can actually pick through all that too if you want to work on picking but i do kind of prefer to use legato and anytime you have two or more notes on you know a single string um, you want to use legato for those and then if you have a single note you're obviously going to pick it but we're in d minor pentatonic at the start right here so right there we're doing a hammer on from that f to g and then a pull off from that g to f on the g string like this first half so that's the first half right there one more time really slow and then you're gonna hear it shift and it's gonna shift to this D flat major 7 sharp 11 uh, kind of an arpeggio so it's definitely started, you know, D minor pentatonic right here. 
and then D flat major seven sharp 11, which is gonna be like this. gonna you know kind of shift back and forth between those two worlds like this <laughs> Because there's, like I said, nothing wrong with those kind of exercises. They just don't really have any musical appeal outside of just some weird, you know, chromatic kind of thing. Which is fine. I love chromatics. But uh, it just doesn't sound musical. You know, it literally just sounds like a cat running up and down, you know, like a piano keyboard or something. But if I hear something like this, it sounds like music. <laughs> exercise is using the half hold diminished scale and I really like this idea because it's forcing you to use all four of your fret hand fingers. It's also forcing you to position shift and work on finger independence and really just tighten up your picking and fingering you know technique and ability. So it's something like this. <laughs> play you know once you kind of warm up you can play it fast and you can see right there we're actually starting here and you could also think of this actually as uh, a harmonic minor with no uh, with no third, which is really interesting, but uh, you can think of it. You know, however you want to think of that. But the important thing here is the exercise itself, which you can see we're actually using all four of your fret hand fingers when you start moving up the neck like that. And go slow, you know, use firm pressure and, and pick kind of firmly. But what I want you to do, you can definitely use that right there as an exercise. That's a good place to start. What we're going to do is we're going to sequence it, which is going to create this more interesting and musical sound. Something like this. And I definitely added more overdrive and distortion to my tone, which is really just kind of pushing me to get ready to play, you know, whether I'm teaching or gigging or jamming or whatever I'm doing. And, you know, I kind of started clean and by the end I've started adding more distortion. But something like this. <laughs> there at the end just to kind of finish uh, you know finish the exercise but if I turn the distortion back down and just walk through it it's something like this and that's the sequence I'm using and then you want to start right here and do the exact same thing an octave higher that's really tricky right there because you have to move over with your third finger and for a lot of players you know that third and pinky is kind of tricky to get to used to working together and that's just really tricky and then go up another octave right here 
And that's where I kind of ended with those taps because I ran out of strings, obviously, and I wanted to finish the exercise. That's why I added this. And there I'm literally just tapping that G sharp and then going all the way up to that B right there. But then one more time with the story. You know, cool exercise. There we go. Cool exercise, and it sounds like something you hear in a song. You know, it doesn't really sound like a workout or a warm-up. It's gonna wrap this episode of Rooster's Millions of Rants with guitar technique spring cleaning, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of warm-ups and exercises and workouts that exist for guitarists. And I know for me, like I mentioned earlier, when I saw Steve Vai's 10-hour workout, you know, I think it was in Guitar World, it blew my mind because I'd never seen anybody break down you know, warm-ups and technique, and he was focusing on his left hand and his right hand, or his fret hand and pick hand. But when I saw that, it put the idea in my head. Because before that, I didn't really know I was supposed to, you know, exercise. I just would pick up my guitar and start riffing or playing some licks or whatever. And when I saw that, I thought, whoa, that's how you refine your ability. You know, that's how you sharpen your skills. And then I literally started grabbing exercises anywhere and everywhere I could find them, whether it was classical guitar, jazz, rock, acoustic, electric, or, you know, whatever. And I really liked it, you know, to where I started to kind of collect them almost, where it was like, all right, I learned this from, you know, John Petrucci, or I learned this from Schofield, or I picked this up from some old Segovia thing, or whatever it was. And I really liked it, you know, where it was different. It wasn't music and songs I was working on. There were these refining, you know, exercises and workouts, which I really dug it, you know, and I still do. So anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to the lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.